proud of you to have um, Jared Jeffries back. Good. You know, I think he'll help us plug some holes and uh, the energy definitely and uh, offensive rebound, different things that he can contribute. Gives the coach uh, a lot more weapons to be able to tactically do something because he can switch up on point guards. He can play, we can play some zones. We can do a lot of things with him that he's very good at. And, uh, and hopefully that will translate into looking good and playing by Will we play tonight? Maybe. Yeah, probably. Are you at all concerned about the bench production? I mean, Tony had a great game against the Walker, but then Spinwell didn't miss with the exception of Walker in Miami the other night. Uh, you know, I'm not concerned about it because I have a lot of faith in these guys. I think they'll be fine. I think they're not playing great right now. I think Tony has, uh, you know, has been off his game since Milwaukee. But you kind of go through stretches like, and like I said, I think it's because you know, all these new guys, new faces, new new things happening. You know, and I'm watching Tony play, and he's like really deferring to the other guy. And he, he's got to have his ego and his his ability to be able to be, I'm Tony Douglas, I gotta do my game and, and blend that in with the other guys. We just can't throw him the ball and everybody stand and watch him play. Let's talk about um, the personnel changes and how, how Carl Landry's meshing and everything like that. Carl's, you know, I thought it would take him a number of games to get the flow, but he, you know, he had one game versus Minnesota where he was a little caught up in the, the trade. And then after that, he's been, he's been flowing, uh, aggressive on offense starting to pick up our defense. It takes a while to pick up the defense we put in place, and that may be why we've dropped off a bit. But he's a guy that, you know, he's been through a trade before, so he knows the rhythm of the trade and how long it takes him to get his flow again. Speaking of your defensive system, how has it really uh, improved this team this year, and how, how long did it take for the, for the collective group to rise? Yeah, well, we, we, we knew right from the start we didn't have a kind of team that was going to score 110, 120 points, so we had to defend guys brought in from day one because we had so many guys who didn't play on their respective teams that where they came from. So they knew if they were going to get minutes, they had to defend. Chris and David played on a team where they were a top five defense before. So Emeka, you know, he's been a defensive guy since whenever. And so, you know, we've had some slippage in that area uh, lately, but the trade may hurt us and that coming off an all-star break may hurt us. But you know, that's who we are and that's who we have to be. Welcome to so much to talk about here, the pregame version of the show. Uh, the New Orleans Hornets are visiting the New York Knickerbockers here in Madison Square Garden. My pleasure to have uh, definitely one of the hardest working and most hustling uh, players in the NBA. And uh, he just got traded last week from the Sacramento Kings. I uh, have Mr. Carl Landry on the show. Pleasure to have you on. Good to have me, man. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. And uh, talk about how Monty Coach Williams um, mentioned that uh, that that you've adjusted very well, especially defensively with the team within the system. So talk about how um, how you're able to uh, adjust so fast. Uh, that's good to hear. <laughs> you know, but uh, I've been here about a week now, and uh, I'm just you know trying to have carryover from what Coach Katie taught me when I was in college. You know, and that's those are just the deepest of principles. Always stay in the stands, be ready to help your teammates, uh, and. Uh, even if you do make a mistake, you know, on defense, as long as you're going hard, most of the time, because you're playing so hard, that covers up for the mistake. So uh, that's one thing that um, Coach Williams is, has taught us is play defense because uh, defense wins games. At the end of the day, all the great teams that wins its championships, the defensive and is, is where it's at. Mm -hmm, of course, yeah. You can't win games. Uh, Definitely, you can't win championships without having some type of defensive uh, system and uh, de defensive uh I don't know, like just you got to be defensive minded to win a championship. If you look at the guys that won, that won in the past, the teams that won, great defense players. So, I wanted to ask you, um, coming from Sacramento, it was a very disappointing season overall for the Kings, and you're now with a, a team that's going to be in the playoffs. So, talk about, um, you know, how sweet is it for you to be part of a contender number one, and number two, how disappointed were you, you know, in in the team progress this year in Sacramento? Well, it was tough in Sacramento because I came from a team last year uh, that won 50 games every year under Rick Adam in Houston, so it was definitely tough, you know, to to win, you know, two games a month and, you know, out and just going out there fighting every night. Yeah, you know, people not knowing who we are in the city, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So it's kind of good. You won't get bothered, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was tough. But having a, a, a opportunity, you know, to come to the, the New Orleans Hornets uh, has, been a, has been a pleasure to me so far. I'm very grateful for the opportunity that, you know, uh, they've given me. And I just want to make the best of it. It's definitely a, a good look. 
One more question, though. Speaking of Coach Katie and Purdue, uh, your alma mater, I mean, without Robbie Hummel, they have been just, you know, clicking on all cylinders, and they could have a number one seed. Um, so how great is it for you as alumni to see their intestinal fortitude as well as um, or do you keep in touch with some of the players or the coaches? Oh, definitely. You know, I go back in the summer and have a camp there, and a lot of players come uh, speak to the kids and, yeah, inter and interact with the uh, kids. So it's definitely uh, – fun seeing those guys win and play as hard as they do. You know, Jawan Johnson and Eats One More has done a great job of carrying the team this year without, you know, Robbie Hummel, one of the better players in, in the collegiate basketball this year before his injury. So uh, they did a great job. They, they're doing a great job. And uh, they keep it up. Who knows? The sky's the limit. I got them going all the way to the Final Four. So <laughs> hopefully win it at all. But uh, great team, man. I'm proud of those guys. Depends on make sure they don't run into a big beast uh, opponent. I mean, the Big East. I mean, <laughs> oh, we're not worried about that. Aaron Gray, we're not worried about that. <laughs> not at all. Big 10 all the way. Best conference in the game. Okay, we'll see. Virginia took it. Anyway, now it's But Purdue's been very consistent for sure. Much props to you. And much props to you and the way you play the game and your hustle, your hard work and desire. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Pleasure to have uh, Rookie Forward uh, from the University of Washington, UW, Quincy Poindex. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Yes, and uh, talk about, I always ask the Rooks this, you know, the adjustment that, that it takes and, and adjustment that you're going through in having your game mature and, and, and being able to have more minutes on the floor. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great adjustment. It, it's something that I feel that I, I love to have in it. Um, it's a great adjustment because, you know, I didn't have a, a redshirt year in college. I didn't have anything like that as a, a freshman in high school. So me being a rookie, it gives me a chance to really look back and see the great veterans do what they do, and hopefully it really helps my game in the future. Talk about the things that you've learned and, and, and the players on your te on this team that you've learned from. And you know, you learn from all these guys. Chris Paul, one of the best point guards in the league. You learn how selfless he is. Um, David West, how, how great of a shooter he is and how disciplined he is in, in his game. And, you know, I learned from all these guys. And, uh, you know, it's a real pleasure to be on a team that's, that's winning and being a rookie to be a, and playing on this team. Uh, one more question, speaking of University of Washington, their tournament team in the Pac-10 has gotten better overall. So talk about how good that is for you. Oh, it's great. It's great to see the, the Pac-10 doing well, as, as well as my, my alumni, uh, University of Washington. Uh, I hope they make a run the, the tournament, and uh, they have all the talent to do it. So I'm excited to see how they turn out, their season turns out this year. Talk to Landry because Landry's the reigning Pac-10 Player of the Year. Have you spoke with him before the game yet? Landry didn't win Pac Player of the Year. Uh, Jerome, Jerome Rander won Player of the Year last year, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, me, me and Landry were running ups last year. So, um, you know, he's a tremendous player. I was telling people during the draft that he should be a first rounder. And he, he was always great competition when we played against each other in college. Quincy, good luck to you the rest of your rookie year. And, uh, and have a, I know you're going to have a flourishing career for sure. Definitely. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much.